Thank you guys so much for coming here today and spending your Mother's Day with us. This is my very first Sunday to ever speak. So if you can just get out your grace bucket and fill it all the way up, please. And if you have any expectation for a pastor's wife, go ahead and wad that up and throw it behind you. Um, Because I'm just going to be me. Is that okay? Thank you. And I was going to try to speak without sunglasses because I feel like it's a little bit more personal, but my eyes are sensitive, so it is what it is. Um, I'm going to take a moment to just pray because if there's anything that I need, it's the Holy Spirit. (laughs) So we're going to take a moment. Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity to stand here today and to speak to your people. Lord, I pray that you would just remove me from this equation, Lord, and that you would just use me as an empty vessel, that your words would flow out of me, and that the hearts of the people would be open today to receive the word that you have deposited into me. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we take a moment to honor Pastor Rocky and what he's done over the past close to a year, you guys? Thank you. I'm telling you, I give him a hard time about spending his Saturdays preparing, and then here I did it, and woo, it's real. The struggle is real. So I'm just going to be honest with you guys. If he had asked me, there's 52 Sundays in a year, like which one do you not want to preach on? Hands down, it would have been Mother's Day. Hands down. But unfortunately, he didn't ask me, and I'm going to tell you guys why it would have been Mother's Day, but this is just the Lord stretching me today. But I just refuse to stand up here and preach a sweet little Hallmark message about superhero mamas who are perfect like that Proverbs 31 gal. And I just, I'm not going to pretend that today is only joyful for all of you here. A lot of you guys are watching online because it was too hard to come today and I'm coming for you today. So we're going to chat today and we're going to go through this, but I just... Don't want us to look at motherhood like it's like this perfect figure. It's supposed to be a woman who never burns a mill. She never loses her cool. Um, That's not what mothers are. Mothers are an influence. And so I'm going to do the enemy a work today, and I'm going to throw him a curveball. And I'm going to call out that Mother's Day is not always easy. And Mother's Day can be a really beautiful thing for a lot of people. And if that's you today, I don't want you to be like, oh, man, now I need to feel guilty for my blessings. No, don't. God gave you those kids. Rejoice in it. That's a promise and an inheritance from him. And you deserve to be celebrated today and all the other days of the year. Mamas work so hard, and a lot of times they go unintentionally unnoticed or unappreciated. But it's just because we just do all the things, right, for all the people. But today, if you're here and you're joyful, be proud in that. Be proud of what you have. Be proud of your family. You deserve that celebration. The Bible says in Romans 12, 15, to rejoice with those who rejoice. So I will rejoice with you today, and I'm going to give you the COVID-19 air high fives all day long if today is a happy day for you. Moms are truly real-life superheroes. I have two boys, and one is really geeked out about superheroes, so it's talked talked a lot in our house. Um, But today can also be a difficult day. And I know that this probably isn't your normal Mother's Day message behind a pulpit, but I want to take a moment to tell you that if today is hard for you, I'm sorry. If today is hard for you, I am so sorry that there is pain on this day. I want you to know woman to woman that there's room for you at my table today. Um, You can sit down and we can weep together because, in fact, that scripture, Romans 12, 15, right after it says to rejoice with those who rejoice, it also says weep with those who weep. And that's what we're called to do as the body of Christ. So I'll sit with you today if that's you. And I'm not going to stand here and say, oh, sister, just push through it. Or brother, if it's hard for you today, just push through it. God is good. Yes, he's good. He always is. But But life can still be hard. Do you guys agree? Okay, so sometimes we need to just sit for the moment in the middle of our pain because it's oftentimes that it's in those sit-down moments that you find your healer. Anybody found their healer in the middle of their pain? I did. So how can we ask for a healing if we can't call out to him with our hurts? You are not less of a Christian today. You are not less of a woman today if today was hard. You're just real, and I'm going to be real with you. So for some, it's hard because you never knew your mom. And this one hits really close to home with me because I have a child who never knew her mom. And that's hard. 
And for some, it's hard because they knew their mama, but she hurt them. And I'm sorry. For some, this is hard because they have years of regret bottled up for how they mothered their children. For some, it's hard because they want their children here with them today, and for whatever reason, they can't be here. For some, it's hard because their mom is no longer living, and I'm sorry. For some, it's hard because they birthed children that another woman is raising. For some, it's hard because they desperately want to become a mom, and that has yet to happen. For some, it's hard because they've walked through the unimaginable tragedy of losing a child, and I'm sorry. For some, it's hard because they're single mamas or moms of blended families, and sometimes that can just feel a little bit complicated. Can I tell you today that your feelings are valid, and I give you permission to feel that way? But what's not okay is to park yourself in the middle of the pain and never get back up. Today, in this moment, I give you permission to sit in that hurt if that's what you need to do. You got to sit there and sit with, and let me sit there with you. But my only requirement is that you that you allow the Holy Spirit to sit with us as well. Because to sit in the middle of your pain, there's nothing more comforting than the Holy Spirit. I cannot possibly know or relate to each of you and where you're at today and your feelings on Mother's Day. And I would be a fool to say that I understood it all because I don't. But I do know the one who does. And that's the Holy Spirit. And he promises to comfort us. The Bible says in John 14, 26, that the Holy Spirit is our comforter. He is here at this place today, and he is ready and willing to minister to every single person on an individual basis because he knows exactly what you need. He loves us that much. So let him sit with you today. Let him comfort you today. Let the healer meet you right where you're at today and heal you. Chains are broken in the name of Jesus, right? We just sung that. Jesus never promised us that we wouldn't walk through hard stuff or battles, But what he did promise us many times throughout scripture is God will never leave you and you will never and he will never forsake you, which means in the middle of your trouble, in the middle of your battle, you are never alone. You may feel like you're alone today. You may feel like you're isolated today. You may feel unseen that your family doesn't notice all the things you do. Or you may feel like no one else is hurting quite like you, but I can promise you that there's other people that can relate to you. And we'll just build a long table and all sit together. I'm so glad that you guys are here today, either in the parking lot, across the lawn, or watching online. Um, And I pray that your heart is open to God and his love today. I want you to know, women, that we see you, we love you, and we are praying for you to feel his overwhelming love in this moment. I believe every promise that God placed in the Bible— And I love standing on the one that says joy comes in the morning. In fact, it's my favorite coffee cup that I have. If you guys know me, I love coffee. Love it. Anybody else a coffee lover? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the response. I'm used to talking to two five-year-olds all day long, and they always have a response. So I appreciate the the feedback. It helps. (laughs) Um, But he can take your pain and turn it into your platform. He can take the destruction that you see all around you and he can turn it into your destiny. He can take the mess that surrounds you right now and he can make it the message that you will one day share to comfort others and offer them hope. And that's exactly what you're looking at today. I have spent many Mother's Days with many, many of you and it was hard for me. I wasn't the mom. I desperately wanted to be the mom. And so I'm here today to take that mess, kind of shove it in the enemy's face. I'm a fighter. Anybody else a fighter? I don't mean physically. I mean, like, I'm just not going down without a fight. (laughs) Poor Pastor Rocky. Um, But today, I want my story to comfort you and give you hope. So 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4 tells us that God is the source of all comfort. He comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort others. Whenever others are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort that God gave us. So that means we're going to go through some hard stuff, but God, if you will allow him to, he will use it to let you minister to other people. What a privilege that is to use our past hurts to offer his healing power and his unfailing love to others. If you're silent in your story today, this isn't even in my notes, so go on, Holy Spirit. But if you're silent with your story today of your past, stop holding that back. 
Stop bottling that in. Use those past things that God has brought you to the other side and use it to minister to other people that are going through the same stuff. Because what is, we are overcomers by the blood of the lamb and what? The word of our testimony, being spoken, being shared, going into the lives and the hearts of others. So that's what I'm here to do today. I'm going to take my past mess and share the message that that God created from it. So today I want to talk to you about the ministry of motherhood, the ministry of motherhood. So what is a ministry for all my kiddos in the house, outdoors, whatever? It's the action of ministering to someone. That's what ministry is. And what is a mom? So the ministry of motherhood, a mom is a woman who looks after someone with care and affection. It's not just a title or a badge that we can earn. It's an influence that you have to nurture and raise others up. Motherhood is hands down a ministry. And you are responsible for discipling the children that have been entrusted to you. If you don't train them up, moms and dads, the world will. It's your job to train them up. And I'm not saying that motherhood is our only ministry. Please don't hear what I'm not saying. Um, Both men and women alike our highest calling in life is to pursue Jesus and to follow Jesus. But I do believe that as women, one of the greatest and most impactful ministries that we could ever be entrusted with is the ministry of mothering someone else. So motherhood comes in many, many ways. To many, it comes by growing a baby in your womb. And what a miraculous and special thing. To some, it comes by growing a child in your heart through the gift of adoption. To some... It comes as opening your heart forever, but your home temporarily to foster a child. To some, it comes as being that mother figure and that mentor in the lives of others. Like Pastor Rocky was saying, like family members, nieces and nephews, students, youth group kiddos, um, the neighborhood kid that needs a, a little extra love. Motherhood comes in many shapes and sizes. And God knew when he assigned you to them that you were created for such a time as this. You're doing a good job, moms. You're doing a good job. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 through 14 says, Be on guard, stand firm in your faith, be courageous, and do everything in love. That is the scripture that God just kind of gave to me whenever I was preparing this, and he asked me to speak that over the lives of the women here today. Number one, be on guard because the enemy prowls around like a nasty lion and he is looking for someone or something to devour. And he would love nothing more than to keep you from viewing your motherhood as a ministry. If he can steal that, he's got a lot. Number two, stand firm. Stand firm in his word and what you believe. Number three, be courageous. Take courage, like Pastor Rocky preached a couple of Wednesdays ago. It takes courage to stand firm in what you believe, especially whenever the enemy comes your way. Number four, be strong. Be strong and let the Holy Spirit give you strength. And number five, do everything in love. Everything. The Bible says, and I don't know the scripture, I'll use Pastor Rocky's reference, it's somewhere between Genesis and Revelation, but it talks about if we give our whole, if we give everything we have to the world, love the orphans and do all the good stuff, do the food drives and all that, but we don't love people, we've got nothing. So it's got to come from a heart of love. So do everything in love. The most natural way for a mama to influence her world for Jesus is through the impact she makes on her kids. We will touch very few lives, ladies, with more intensity than the children that God has entrusted to us. The time that is devoted to our children shouldn't be spent as just marking off time. Another day, another hour, another bath time, another Sunday morning. Whoever said Sunday morning is easy, that's not the truth. Um, Sunday mornings are hard. Can I get an amen from the parents, please? Thank you. Um, But we should, time devoted should be an investment into our greatest ministry opportunity. If you don't know our story, I'm going to share just a little bit. Um, But growing up, the one thing I always wanted to be is a mom. I have two sisters, and I was, in fact, the bossy one. Do I have any more bossy siblings in the house? 
Yes, I was the bossy one. Did Pastor Rocky just yell amen? <laughs> we call it leadership these days. It's leadership. So if you have any kiddos that are super bossy, they are going to be a great leader and a world changer. Amen. Speak it. Believe it. Um, but I was the bossy one. So anytime we played house, that's what sisters do. I would like stuff a pillow under my shirt, and I was the mom. I was the mom. I have made them be a dad. I mean, I mean, I was the mom all the time. So my one dream was to get pregnant and nurture babies and raise a family, and I could not wait until that dream became a reality. So Rocky and I got married super, super young. I turned 20 the week before we walked down the aisle here at the church um, with the orange carpet and the blue pews. Anybody else remember that? Or did I get that backwards? Did I get it backwards? Yeah, it was awesome. Made for great pictures. Um, but we got married in 2006. And in the fall of 2009, I had finished college. I was a labor and delivery nurse. Literally my dream job. I'm telling you, I love everything about that. Um, and Rocky was had already been established in his career with his family for quite some time. And so we knew that the next thing that we were supposed to do was start a family. So month after month... I would see one line on a pregnancy test. And men, you want to see two if you want to be pregnant. <laughs> but after one year, we found out that we, we found ourselves in the biggest fight of faith that we had ever been in at that point. And it brought us to our knees. And I've shared before at some women's conferences that I've spoken at, but the cool thing about being on your knees is you have two places to look. Number one, you can look down. And that's about as far as that vision goes. Or number two, you can raise your head up and look up to where your help comes from. And thankfully, the Holy Spirit got a hold of us. And we looked up and we allowed God to start transforming our lives. We were diagnosed with unexplained infertility. So here's a little science lesson for today. If you have unexplained infertility, that means they can't find anything medically wrong with the husband. They can't find anything medically wrong with the wife. Yet you're not able to get pregnant. But how many of you guys know that we serve an unexplainable God, an unexplainable God that is bigger than unexplained infertility? I could not believe that this was my story. Like, this is not what life is supposed to look like. This is not how I had it planned out. I love control, and I had no control. Did my husband laugh again? That was a little too loud, babe. Um, but I remember thinking, you guys, what's the point in being alive if I can't be a mom? Can I be real? What's the point in being here if I can't be the one thing that I've always dreamed of being? I was crushed month after month. Infertility is hard because it's this cycle of, okay, I have hope. It's a new month. It's a new time. It's going to happen. And then it doesn't, and you're destroyed. And you just feel so unworthy and insignificant as a woman. And then you get more hope again, and then you're destroyed again. And it's just this vicious roller coaster cycle. And we walk through infertility treatments, procedures, medications, surgery. We emptied out our savings account, and we took out loans to try to have a baby. Um, nothing worked. So our greatest pain led to our greatest promise. If anybody here finds themselves in the middle of what you feel like is your greatest pain today, can you just stand and believe, I don't mean physically stand, but just stand on it and believe that your greatest promise is on the other side of this. Rocky gave his life to Jesus because of infertility. We answered the call to ministry because of infertility. We ended up doing mission work because of infertility. Mission work ended up opening our eyes to the orphan crisis across the world, which ultimately led to us adopting two, two children because it, it first started with infertility. Everything in our lives changed because of a mess that we found ourselves in. And the enemy wanted nothing more than to destroy us in that season. And he almost did. He almost did. But thankfully, we allowed God to break us down and mold us into who he wanted us to be. And that is where my mess became my message. I will never forget December 12th of 2013. It's my father-in-law's birthday. Um, I will never forget that day. I woke up that morning after working like four 12, 13, 14 hour shifts in a row. I was exhausted and I heard the Holy Spirit say, you're pregnant. Words I had never heard to myself before. And I sprung up out of bed and I went to the nearest Dollar General and I bought about 57 pregnancy tests. And I got home, you guys know, and I got home and instantly there were two lines. Instantly. 
And prior to that, we had stopped all infertility treatments two years before that happened. So I'm telling you that it was God and only God that put this promise inside of me and allowed and healed me of that. Caleb became our promise from God. I love you, Caleb. And 12 weeks after Caleb was born and 18 months into the process of trying to adopt internationally, we were referred to Addison. Addison and Caleb are 50 days apart. Um, after meeting Addison, or the day we met Addison, we also met Tess Faye. And a couple of months after coming home with two one-year-olds and literally trying to survive, like we weren't even thriving at that point, we were surviving. Um, but God called us to add Tess Faye to our family. I believe with everything in me that it was never God's plan A for a child to be orphaned. That's not my God. He does not plan for kids to not have a family. But unfortunately, it happens more than you'd like to know. And adoption is messy, but it's also really beautiful. Adoption comes from brokenness. My family was formed from brokenness. But we're confident that God trades beauty for ashes. And we believe that we get the opportunity to show others what God's beauty can do with some broken pieces. So if motherhood is a ministry, it's also inevitable that we won't face attacks from the enemy. If he could take the joy out of your ministry or get you so focused on the daily task rather than the legacy you get to leave behind, then he's accomplished a lot. The Bible says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he would love nothing more than to steal your joy, your confidence, your hope, and your destiny by keeping you from realizing that motherhood is one of the greatest ministry opportunities you'll ever have. Selflessly serving and loving others is not easy. Can I get the parents to say amen? That is not easy. In fact, although we love our little people, like we would lay down our life for them, motherhood is downright exhausting. Coming from a mom that currently has two five-year-olds, I learned yesterday that the average five-year-old asks 447 questions a day. I have two. So that's almost 900, I think, if I did my math right. Um, thankfully, Tesfe is way smarter than I am, so I'm asking him questions rather than him asking me. But the average five-year-old asks five, 447 questions. So whenever I go to bed at night, we've got the two five-year-olds, the 14-year-old, and we currently have the opportunity to love a little bonus baby. But I stay tired. Um, God loves you with an unfailing love, parents, and he has given you enough grace for this moment and this season. I want you to know right, right now that no matter the mistakes you feel like you've made, Pastor Rocky touched on this a minute, but the failures you feel like you have, the hard days you had, the time you forgot, this is me, by the way, the time you forgot it was pajama day at school, and all the kids in the school showed up with pajamas on except you two. That was me. They, they looked cute, though, and they were dressed. It was perfect. Um, but the times that your kids ate cereal for dinner last night <clears throat> or the times that you lost your cool on your kiddos and felt like a failure afterwards. I've done that before. The times you woke up in the morning and started the countdown to how long before it's bedtime. Or the lies that the enemy tries to feed you guys day in and day out. I want to encourage you to stand firm. And to know that there isn't another woman in this world that can love your children quite the way you can. Don't let him lie to you and convince you otherwise. God has never asked moms to be perfect. Let me repeat that. God has never asked moms to be perfect. We have to plant that truth inside of our minds. He asked us to show up, be present, and abide in him. And to do all things in love. So instead of spending our days striving for perfection or beating ourselves up whenever it doesn't happen, we should strive for his presence, his presence over perfection, seeking his kingdom first, knowing that when we do, everything else will fall into place. So often in motherhood, we are programmed to mark time off and constantly being pushed by the world. Wait until the next season. It's only harder. And maybe we've made the mistake of saying that to other women too, but you know, you're pregnant and Brittany, Brittany's having a baby, Brittany's pregnant. And so she, people say to her, oh, just wait until he's, he or she's a newborn. You're going to be so exhausted. And then the newborn comes and they're like, Marky, Marky's got a newborn back there. And then the newborn comes and they're like, oh, just wait. So you're, they're a toddler and they're running all around. You can't take their eyes off or you can't take your eyes off of them. And then that stage comes and they're like, oh, just wait till you got to put your baby in preschool. 
It's so hard. And then that stage comes and they're telling you about middle school and how they're wanting to like get a cell phone test Faye, and how they're wanting to have social media and how you need to prepare yourself for this. And then they get into middle school and people are like, oh, just wait till they're in high school and they want to date. Then you remember your high school and you, you don't want them to go to high school and go into that season. But then they become an adult and they're telling you just wait till they go to college and they, they're not in your home anymore. And then they go to college and they're like, just wait until they get married. You better hope you love that daughter-in-law or that son-in-law. There, there's always this pressure to mark off time and that this season is not enough. Mamas, this season is enough and you're enough in this season. You are enough. We must learn to quiet the noise that keeps us constantly distracted from our present time and learn to be all in, in this present season and this present moment. His grace is sufficient and you are called to carry it out. I was sharing this part with Pastor Rocky the other day and he coined a good phrase, he's good at that, but he said, be present in your present with your present. And I thought that was a good statement. Be present, be all in, in your present, in your present time with your gift from the Lord. One of the biggest ways that the enemy can steal our joy and keep us from viewing motherhood as a ministry is through the trap of comparison. I don't look like her. I don't throw parties like her. I don't have a husband like her. I don't cook like her. I don't do the Pinterest crafts like her. I don't homeschool like her. That's me. I don't homeschool like her. I don't keep up with the chaos like her. I don't lead like her. I don't, I don't, I don't. You gotta stop the madness. You were created to love your kids, and in Him, you are enough for them. The word says that His strength is made perfect in our weakness, and sometimes the most humble place that we can be is in the middle of our weaknesses because that is where His strength can shine through. Motherhood is so selfless. Whenever Pastor Rocky asked me, he kind of just kept saying, I want you to preach on Mother's Day, and I would say no. And then he would say, I want you to preach on Mother's Day, and I would say no. And then finally I was like, okay, I'm going to do it because the Holy Spirit was kind of checking me over it. But he kept saying, motherhood is so selfless. It's so selfless. And I'm here to tell you that that's true. I want you to think about Mary for a moment. Kiddos, you guys know that Mary was a young girl. She's not your average picture of a mother. She was a teen. And she was engaged to be married to Joseph. And she was entrusted to carry the Savior of the world. She was called to raise a king. And every time that I read about Mary in the Bible, she appears so calm. I would be totally freaked out, wouldn't you? She appears so calm. And so many see her as the mother of Jesus, but I really see her as like a model for calmness and peace and peace in the midst of crazy, being asked to do something crazy and radical. She knew from the moment that she found out that she was pregnant with Jesus that her love for him would require a selfless sacrifice. She did everything in love. She stood firm in what she was at and what was asked of her, and she was courageous. Imagine raising a child knowing that the world that he would save would take his life. He was made for God's purpose, and she couldn't put her agendas on him no matter how much she wanted to. Mary recognized herself as a servant of God. I think if we begin to see ourselves, mamas, as servants of God, we can handle the everyday task that, you know, the same thing that happens all day, every day. We can handle that with a little bit more grace, a little bit more patience, and a whole lot more love because we realize we're about our Father's work. Whenever we serve God, we truly do serve our family. Speaking of selfless moms, I want you to think of Moses' mom. I'm going to call her Mama Jo, but you actually say it Jochebed, I think. That sounds right. Anybody disagree? Okay, cool. So Mama Jo, she talk about true selflessness. All for the sake of loving her baby. She was on guard to the ways of the enemy, and she stood firm, and she was courageous, and she did it all out of love. All boys were getting murdered at that time, and she knew that she wanted to save her son, so she kept him with her for three months, hiding him. It'd be hard to hide a three-month-old. And she wove a basket and placed him in a river hoping that he would be found by an Egyptian. Well, God is really cool, and he wasn't just found by any Egyptian. He was found by the Pharaoh's daughter, the princess, one of the most influential Egyptians of that time. 
And many know the story about where Moses' sister Marion was watching the basket and approached the princess and asked if she should find a mom that could nurse him. And so the princess said, yes, of course. And the sister brought Moses' mom to the princess. She never knew that was his birth mom and allowed this woman to nurse the baby that was actually hers. Isn't God amazing like that? She was so selfless to allow her son to return back to the princess once he was weaned. What a selfless, sacrificing love. Or what about Queen Esther? A lot of times, I I bet you rarely hear about Esther on Mother's Day because I've never read where she's a mom in the Bible, and maybe she was, it just doesn't mention it. But the Bible, she was an orphan child. I love Esther. She was an orphan child raised by her cousin Mordecai. And the world saw that baby girl as forgotten, but God saw her as chosen. She became the wife to a king and at one point was in a position to have have the opportunity to do a really hard thing and call some people out on their evilness and call for justice. And she stood firm in what she believed and she was courageous and she did it all in love. She could have said no and stayed comfortable being the queen. That would have been the easy way out. But instead, she rose up and she used her voice to speak for people who were voiceless. She was called for such a time as that. And although the Bible doesn't say anything about her being a mom, I can only imagine the mama bear rising up inside of her as she fought for her people. That's a mother figure. That's a superhero in my book. That's a woman who defended people for God's glory. Whether she had grown babies in her own womb or not, I consider her a heroic mother-like figure. And that was her ministry, and she carried it out so well. There are people who search an entire lifetime to figure out their callings and their anointings and their purpose and their ministry, and they search and search and search whenever the whole time God might have had one sitting right there at your own dining room table. Don't overlook the gifts that are sitting next to you every day asking 447 questions in a 16-hour wake period. Don't neglect to to love on the gifts that are right in front of you. The world tries to tell us that we lose ourselves whenever we become a mom. Have you ever heard that? I can't wait to get back to myself. Guys, you didn't lose yourself. You found yourself whenever you became a mom. You found the greatest ministry you could ever have. So do what Isaiah 30, 21 says. And that is the way. Walk in it. Walk it out. So for the moms that find themselves in the, as like the ultimate chaos coordinator today, this is the season I'm in. Life is absolutely crazy. I encourage you to flip the script whenever you find yourself overwhelmed by the daily task. The laundry on the floor, let's look at that like, we have clothes to wear. The early wake-up calls means that we have babies to love. I'm trying to think how many times I was up last night. Two with the baby, two with Addie, none with Caleb. Caleb, you win. You and Tess Faye. Um, But so five, did I count five? No, two, four, something. Anyway, those early wake-up calls, that means you have babies to love. The messy house that needs to be cleaned, it means that you have a safe place for your family to live. Dirty dishes means that you had food to eat. Crumbs under the table means you shared a meal with each other. A noisy house means that you have kids that are filling the atmosphere. Endless questions means you have a child that is learning. Going to bed exhausted, like literally collapsing in bed. That's me most nights. It means that you have people that got your all. You have people that got your all. The ministry of motherhood is yours today. Ministry is not just this. In fact, this is like low on the totem pole if you ask me. Ministry is the life that we live. Whether you live in your home, whether children live in your home or you mentor them on some level, you have the power, women, to pray prayers over the children that you have influence over that will outlast you a lifetime. Many people don't know this, but Tesfe had a friend at the same orphanage as him who her parents are deceased, so she's an orphan. And she was removed from the orphanage. She's a little bit older than him. She was removed from the orphanage after he came home. 
and we found her over Facebook. Of all the things, they have Facebook. And we found her over Facebook, and we, I guess you could say, sponsor this child. We make sure that she goes to school. She's a straight-A student, so she has a bright future. She just never had anyone believe in her. We make sure she goes to school. We, we make sure she has a home for her and her sister, food to eat. I'm not technically her mommy. I've never adopted her, but she calls me mama. We talk once or twice a month. She calls me mama and says, I'm so blessed to have a mommy like you. We all have that same opportunity. You have the power to pray those prayers. You have the power. I think that is the greatest legacy we could ever leave, parents, is the prayers that outlast us. It's the greatest legacy we could ever leave. You have the power to teach them about God's unfailing love. You have the power to disciple them and to train them up to be world changers for Jesus. You have the power to lead them to the cross when times get hard. You have the power to love them with a Jesus kind of love. In fact, you are the one they see that loves like Jesus. You have the power to change this world all all while choosing to give them all you've got. You hold that authority in your hands, whether you believe it today or not. And you are called and equipped to carry it out. And you are doing a good job. If you're abiding in him and you're seeking his presence, you're doing a good job. It is a ministry. And it has the opportunity to become the greatest one we'll ever have. So walk it out today. Hold your head high. Know that they were created for you and you were created for them. And there's so many ways to be a mom outside of birthing one. The kids that you teach at school, Sister Dawn, you've got an influence over them. The young teens that are in our youth group, you have an influence over them. Our children's department, you are a mother or a father type figure. We're going to talk about dads in a few weeks, okay? I don't want y'all to feel left out. I promise it's coming. But you are an influence in their lives and they deserve you and they deserve your all. Aunt Linda, you're a grandmama to my babies and I just want to say thank you. I just consider her an adopted grandma. We got all kinds of adoption happening in my family, but she loves them so selflessly. That's a mom. That's a mama. And we want to celebrate all women today. So today we want to honor every single woman that is here. There's nothing awkward. Stand if you've birthed a child. Sit if you don't. We're not doing that. All women here deserve a little recognition today for walking out the ministry of motherhood in some form. Like I said, whether it's biological, children, adopted, foster children, nieces, nephews, students, neighborhood kids, young adults seasoned mamas whose kids are out of your house. There's women like me who need mentors. I'm not saying that I don't have that in my mom because I do. I was raised by an amazing family. I'm just saying there's different areas of our lives that we need mentors. So your motherhood season is not over. We all have the opportunity to influence people around us with a mothering kind of love. And today at The Refuge, we're going to honor all women. I chose this year to give you guys a long stem flower because flowers are designed to bloom right where God plants them. They make this world a prettier place. They are strong and they have their roots buried deep into the dirt so that they can stand firm. They are not afraid to go through dirt to ultimately bloom for everyone to see. They just bloom. They're not looking to the left or the right to see what other flowers are doing. They are just blooming. That's what we do as moms. We take it one day at a time, one moment at a time, and we give it our best and we bloom and we grow. And the seed from our harvest, man, it can impact the world. So be planted in him today. Come out of the dirt stronger than ever and grow your roots deep in Christ. When you do this, you make everyone around you even better. So today we want all women to accept the rose that our awesome parking lot team is distributing right now from the refuge and know that we see you, we love you, we honor you, and you and your story are safe at this place. We are blessed to do life with you guys. Be on guard, stand firm, be strong, be courageous, 
and do everything you do in love. If everyone would stand up, I just want to pray over the women here today. Father God, thank you for every woman that is in this place, Lord. Whether today is a joyful day for them, Lord, or whether it is a hard day for them, I thank you, Lord, that today they showed up. For everyone joining us online, I thank you that you plugged into this today. And I speak an abundant blessing over your lives in the name of Jesus that the things that you do, although you may not feel rewarded daily here on this earth, you are storing up jewels and crowns in heaven and your reward is so eternal. I pray that you would know that you can stand firm and be courageous and do all the things in love and that you were called for such a time as this and that his anointing is on you to disciple your children, that his blessing is on you to speak those promises over them that his goodness will chase you down and that you were called for this. You were equipped for this. You are good enough. You don't have to be anyone else but you. And so Lord, we just pray that you would bless the moms and the mom figures in this place today, Lord. And we just give you all the glory, the honor and praise in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. You guys, give it up for Pastor Sam. I wasn't even going to take the platform at all, but God gave me something as I was sitting over there. I was just going to sit and let her finish out the service. And God said, you know, the, the powerful thing about a mother's love, you know, dad, the kids always want to perform. Like if my son figures out he can make a shot from a little further than the last time I saw him. He wants me to perform. The great thing about a mother's love is that the kids know they can just be. They don't have to perform for it. And I want you to know mothers just rest in that today. Just rest in that that however you are is how God accepts you. You don't have to be whoever the Instagram mom is that you follow that you think is perfect. Just be you. A mother's love is powerful in the fact that we don't have to perform for it. You just get to be. So I'm going to ask the worship team to sing us out of here. We love you guys so much. Happy Mother's Day to all you mother figures out there. We love you guys. Thanks for coming out today. Let's worship for just a moment as we leave.